Hey everybody, this is my 20 long open topped office tank and in it you'll notice I have a German blue ram. I've just fed the tank so we should get a little bit of activity. We're not really going to talk too much about this tank, believe it or not. We are going to look at this tank while we talk about water chemistry. I have been meaning to do this for a while. But the last time I shot a video on this tank, I discussed the nitrate levels in this tank, which we will be discussing again tonight. But when I suggested that these rams can live in higher levels of nitrate than people typically believe, uh, I had a lot of people respond by saying that in the native habitat, it's probably very likely that these animals are exposed to some nitrates uh, in the wild. So I wasn't so sure about that. I've tested the water and the stream across the street from my house many times over the years. I'll grant you I haven't done it in several years now, but when I first got interested in the hobby, I did stuff like that all the time. I was curious about water everywhere, and I never ever found any trace of nitrates in the water across the street, despite being about a half a mile downstream from a golf course, you know, with all the fertilizer, and then, of course, I live in a fairly rural area, so there's a lot of fertilizer runoff from farms and stuff like that around here. And yet, I never found any nitrates in the water uh, in the stream across the street. So today, while I was out fishing on Pretty Boy Reservoir, I took a water sample from way out in the middle of the channel. I was in about 100 feet of water, and I was nowhere near any streams or inlets or anything that would have been feeding water into the reservoir. It was the water that had been in the reservoir for quite some time. It was way down in the bottom end of the reservoir, so all the stuff flowing in wouldn't have been affecting it, etc. So I came home and I checked all of the different water parameters and I found some pretty interesting stuff. I found that the water is extremely soft, as I expected it to be. It had zero degrees hardness. It only had 89 parts per million total dissolved solids. So the zero degree softness doesn't surprise me. But what did surprise me was that it had a pH of 8.2. Now, I don't know why the pH was so high when the dissolved solids and hardness was so low. Typically, it's the, the calcium and the magnesium, the things that make water hard, also tend to make water more alkaline. So when I hear of water that's got a pH of 8.2, I naturally assume it's got a fairly substantial amount of hardness to it. To hear a pH of 8.2 and then see zero degrees hardness was... Uh, a little surprising. Now, when I say zero degrees hardness, I, let me explain. Uh, I may have been doing this test wrong, but the API general hardness test, you take your vial of water. It's very similar to a pH test or a nitrate test or anything else. You put five mil up to the line. Then you put one drop in and you mix it up and it should turn orange. And then you put another drop in and you mix it up and you check again. If it's still orange, you add another drop. If it's still orange, you add another drop. And you keep counting the drops until it suddenly changes to green. And whatever number drop you were on when it changes to green is how many degrees of hardness you have. So I put a drop in and it didn't look orange, but it didn't look green either. It looked yellow. So I put another drop in, and I put another drop in, and I put another drop in, and at 20 drops, I was still just this bright yellowy color that didn't look green, but didn't really look orange either. So at that point, I decided it's definitely not 20 degrees hardness. If my total dissolved solids is only 90 or thereabouts, there's no way it's 20 degrees hardness. And so I started messing around. I took some samples of my tap water and my own groundwater, which I know has no hardness in it. I treat it so that there's no hardness in it. And those tests did exactly the same thing. The first drop went in, and I got this sort of yellowy color. So I'm guessing that's what they're calling green or maybe if there was some hardness in the water maybe the green would have really you know it really would have turned orange and then it really would have shifted to green it would have been noticeable i don't know but the reservoir water did exactly what my zero degree hardness water did it looked identical 
So I'm chalking that up to calling it zero degrees hardness. And again, at 89 or 90 parts per million total dissolved solids, that doesn't surprise me at all. Those dissolved solids could be anything. So it doesn't have to be um, hardness necessarily adding to that number. I did check the nitrates, and that was another surprise. I uh, was not expecting to see any nitrates whatsoever, and that is what I got. I know that's not a proper look at what the nitrate vial looks like, but that is about five parts per million, and I was really surprised to see any nitrates in the water at all, but it does indeed have about five parts per million. So this tank, I tested it because I know there is interest in the... Um, ram here and whether or not the ram can live in the nitrates or not that is why we're actually looking at this tank while we talk about the water and this is what the nitrates in this tank currently look like and again not the best way to view this i know that looks like red kool-aid it's not that red uh but we are rapidly approaching 40 parts per million it's somewhere between 20 and 40 uh, i'd probably put it closer to 40 than 20 but I don't think we're at 40 parts per million yet. And again, that doesn't concern me in the slightest. I have no intention of doing a water change on this tank tonight. I'm not even going to bother topping it off because I just don't have time. Uh, I've actually got some company coming over in a little while. And this kind of stuff just doesn't stress me out. I'll get to this tank tomorrow or the next day or whatever. If the nitrates get up to 60 parts per million, I'm not in the least bit concerned. I really don't think it's going to have any impact whatsoever on this GBR not exactly sure the species or the cultivar or whatever you would call it. I guess it's not a cultivar when it comes to an animal. That's more of a plant terminology. Um, I know that it was labeled as a long finned, but it definitely looks like it has some other genetics in there too. It might have a little bit of gold uh, coloration in it or something. I don't know, but it is an absolutely fantastic looking German blue ram. I'm in love with this fish. And my only real concern is that I overfeed him. Every time I come in the room, he comes right up to the glass and he does this adorable little dance and waggle. And I just can't help myself. I go over there and give him a little pinch of food. So he probably gets fed three or four times a day uh, with very light feedings. And then, of course, he also has all the guppies and everything in the tank with him uh, to keep him company and help him eat all that food. But we will be keeping an eye on the nitrates on this tank. I will uh, let you know next time I do a water change what the nitrates were before the water change actually took place. No, no, uh, no sense in checking after the water change. Uh, we'll check beforehand and we'll see what they are. And again, I really will do a conversation about uh, nitrates coming up here in the very near future. And on a final note with this tank, I did shoot some video about it the other day where I was concerned that my uh, temple plant was suffering a calcium magnesium deficiency. And I'm absolutely certain it is suffering a calcium and magnesium deficiency at this point. But I did take a couple of eggs worth of egg shell and crushed it up and I have sprinkled that all throughout there. It's kind of hard to tell because I crushed it up really small. Um, you can see the little white specks every now and again here and there. Uh, there is a lot of eggshell crushed up in there. Again, it's, I don't know, it's three or four eggs worth of uh, eggshell. I had it sitting in my mortar and pestle from a long time ago. I crushed up, I was going to put it in my garami tank and I never got around to it. Uh, so I dumped it into this tank. So hopefully over time as that stuff begins dissolving, then we will get a little bit more um, calcium and magnesium into the water and my temple plant there will do okay. If not, I might have to start dosing with some ferts or something like that. I've never put any kind of foods or ferts or tabs or anything in any of my tanks and I really don't want to, but if I need to do that to get these uh, plants straightened out, then I guess I'll have to. So there you go, just a little chat about the water out at Pretty Boy Reservoir. Not sure who's interested in that kind of stuff or not, but I found it interesting. And I'm particularly interested in the fact that we had zero degrees hardness, but 8.2 pH. So if anyone can explain that to me, um, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear how we can have such high pH, but zero degrees hardness in such soft water. And I did not test the carbonate hardness. I guess I should have done that. I didn't even think about testing the carbonate hardness to see what the buffering uh, capacity is. But usually when you have zero degrees hardness, you have a pretty uh, low buffering capacity as well. So I wouldn't imagine there was very much carbonate hardness uh, in the water either. So anyway, you slice it. Uh, that's what we found out today. A uh, little bit of nitrates, 8.2 pH, 90 parts per million total dissolved solids and very, very soft water.
So thanks again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss anything I got coming up with this tank or my discussions on nitrates uh, or any of the other stuff that's going to be coming up. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of that. And then don't forget, of course, that this one here is my 20-gallon open-topped office tank. So thanks again. I'll see you real soon in the next one.